Now, on the other hand, Dhritarashtra, who could not see, wanted to know what was happening. Like how we have the live telecast, he wanted to have a live telecast. Sanjaya had the power given by a Rishi so that he could see things that could happen in the far. That is why he was a Dur Darshan of those times. Dur Se Darshan. Dur Se Darshan means one who can have the glimpse of what is happening, something which is quite far. So Sanjaya was being questioned by Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra said, what are my sons and Pandu's sons doing on the Dharma Kshetram called as Kurukshetram? Dharma Kshetre, Kurukshetre, Samavedha, Yuyutsavaha. Mamakaha of Pandavas, Chaiva, Kimapurvata Sanjaya. What are they doing, Sanjaya? Then Sanjaya kept on saying what Krishna said, what Arjuna asked. What Arjuna asked and Krishna said, Bhagavan Vacha, Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha, Bhagavan Vacha. Like these 700 verses go. And at the end of it, Dhritarashtra asks, Okay, you have told me all these beautiful verses of what Krishna told uh, Arjuna. Let us forget all that. Now tell me, what will be the fate of this particular Mahabharata Yudha? Sanjaya, I know you are very intelligent and you are a person who thinks logically. Tell me what will be the result. Sanjaya did not want to say that your sons, that is Kauravas, will lose. Because he was a servant any day. And Dhritarashtra was the king. But he put his words and his thoughts in a very beautiful manner. He said, I'll tell you one thing, king. I do not know who will win, whether it will be the Kauravas or the Pandavas. But I can tell you one thing. There is a beautiful chariot. On that chariot is a great yogi, a person who does great yogam. His name is Krishna. And seated behind him is a great son of Kunti called as Partha, that is Arjuna, who is a great warrior and who is a master in archery. On, in the front is Krishna who is a great yogi. And at the same place behind him is a great Dhanurdhar, a person who is a master in archery, that is Arjuna. Wherever there is Krishna and wherever there is Arjuna, there is surely success there only Maharaja Hamishtrashtra. That means what? Sanjaya wanted to say that your sons will lose and Pandavas will win. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Danurdhara, Tatra Shrihi Vijayo Bhutir Dhruvani Tir Matir Mama. Like how he said, the same as the comparison, what Sugriva gave. Wherever Angada is, wherever, wherever Hanuman is, wherever Jambavan is, there is success. Now, Hanuman then came along with the monkeys after enjoying the great delicious fruits in Madhuvanam in Tamil Nadu. Now he came to Ampi, Vijayanagaram, Kishkinda Rajam in Karnataka. Now, Ram, Lakshmana and Sugriva welcome, welcomed all the monkeys. Hanuman then came and informed the news. In between this session, we will have a doubt. Ram was so much worried as to whether Hanuman will reach Sita, convey the message or not and he was worried whether Hanuman will return back in good health from Lanka and now Hanuman instead of coming and directly informing Ram that he has seen Sita he is enjoying with all the monkeys in Madhuvanam. How is this right? Isn't Hanuman being irresponsible? Shouldn't he come and inform Ram in the first hand itself will be our doubt. Whether we have solutions or not we are all people who always have questions and doubts. For this question also there is a very interesting episode. In Ramanujacharya's tradition, there are various branches, there are various acharyas. One such acharya is Parashara Bhatta. He was the son and disciple of Kuresha. Kuresha was one principal acharya and sishya of, he was a sishya of Ramanuja. Ramanuja's sishya was Kuresha. Kuresha had two sons. Among the two sons of Kuresha, one son was Parashara Bhatta. Parashara Bhatta had one sishya called as Nanjiyar. Parashara Bhatta was the son of Kuresha. Parashara Bhatta Sishya was Nanjiya. This Parashara Bhatta used to give beautiful Upanyasams, beautiful lectures every day to his Sishya Nanjiya. Nanjiya in turn after having listened to the beautiful words of his Acharya Parashara Bhatta would in turn ask certain doubts. But the doubts used to be so interesting and at the same time the replies given by his Acharya Parashara Bhatta will be very interesting and surprising. That is the beauty. That is why people generally say, in this world, there can be no person who can beautifully question like Nanjiyar and there can be no other person who can answer so beautifully like Parashar Bhatta. There is, they are like a benchmark to us. When he was hearing to the discourses that his Acharya Parashar Bhatta was giving on Sundara Kandam, this Nanjiyar asked his Acharya, 
it is very beautiful my acharya i agree that sundara kandam is really a sundara kandam but i have one doubt you say that hanuman is such a great acharya and such a great person why didn't he come and immediately inform from lanka to ram that he has seen sita why was he so irresponsible and he went along with all the monkeys to madhuvanam ate all the fruits and slowly came walking to ram why was he so irresponsible then parashar bhatta said had hanuman and all the monkeys come directly to kishkinda instead of going to madhuvanam whatever was the effect of madhuvanam would have been the effect on the back of ram we didn't understand this i'll explain this what is the explanation when hanuman had so much of joy multifold times was the joy of all the monkeys whenever you are very happy for example i make i get a seat or an admission to one of the best colleges in the world my friend is seated beside me will i go with folded hands anjali hastam and say i have got a seat in one of the best colleges or what will i do i will give one pat on his back and say are i have got a seat in one of the best colleges in the world imagine that like me this friend of mine has 10 friends who have got simultaneously seats in the best colleges in the world i will give him one pat the second one will give him one pat likewise there will be 10 pats the first pat he can bear but the second third and fourth and till 10th now he will start experiencing some pain now there were no there were the number of monkeys was not one or two there were 70 lakhs of monkeys there now each of these monkeys were not lightweight champions they were all people with great strength and valor now had hanuman along with the monkeys march towards kishkinda instead of going to madhuvanam in between whatever was the effect of madhuvanam would have been the effect what ram's hip back would have experienced what was the effect madhuvanam experienced madhuvanam which was a beautifully well maintained garden existed no more after these monkeys went away because they tore all the plants they took all the fruits and ate crushed all the fruits and the vanam was no more a vanam there was only barren land had madhuvanam not come in the middle in their of their journey towards kishkinda each monkey would have gone towards ram and said i have seen sita and would have given him one pat the second monkey would have come and said i have seen sita and given him one pat likewise they would have given each one would have given one one pat on the back of ram and 70 lakh pats he would have got and by the end of it like how the beautiful madhuvanam turned into a barren land so would have been the beautiful and the strong back of ram turned into a barren land that is why hanuman wanted to prevent this very devastating effect on the uh, back of uh, ram and that is why he prevented all the monkeys from going to kishkinda directly and allowed them to go inside madhuvanam and sell out and give away all the joy to madhuvanam and then go in a very reserved and in a very humble manner before ram so this was the reply that was given by parashara patta look at the beautiful question and look at the beautiful answer all our purvacharyas have never left us any space where we can question and where we can get an answer every question in shrimad ramayana will have an answer but to get all these answers first of all we should read if we have the intention to ask questions right from the starting itself we will never know anything about ramayana neither can we get a convincing reply first we have to read ramayana experience it in a very beautiful manner from the right person we should not read any book and we should not hear to any person whom we like he should be telling ramayana as a great scripture we should listen to it hear it research on it and at the end of it if we still have questions there will be no question and at the end of it there are certain questions you have to approach an acharya and he will surely give answers there is no doubt about it now sugriva told dadimuka don't worry dadimuka this is because of the effect that hanuman has seen sita and now sugriva told ram that hanuman will be coming hanuman now came to ram he just said one line tatra drishta maya sita so sita these two words have been put by the tamil poet kamban kandeen sita yai kandeen in tamil means drishta in sanskrit that is i have seen whom sita now why did he say so sita 
he should have said sita i have seen nobody will say saw sita why did he say this because hanuman knew very well what ram's feelings were he was so much in a depression that he readily wanted to hear the news that hanuman had seen sita and Ra, instead hanuman comes and stands before ram hey bhagavan the one who has the eyes like that of the lotus the one whose hips are so thin the one whose complexion is so beautiful i had been to lanka i crossed the ocean then i met ravana akshay kumara indrajit then i met all the rakshasis finally i went to simshupa vriksham under the simshupa vriksham was a lady called sita i told sita then sita told me and then he had come by the first two words itself rama would have collapsed all that he wanted was whether hanuman saw sita or not so using that word saw hanuman said saw sita the description and all the detailed story will come later if you go to certain people and ask a critical answer to a critical question they won't reply in a straight manner what time did you come yesterday if we ask what should they say 9:30 or 10:30 or 11:30 no yesterday there was a big traffic jam i went to this bus stop there was no bus there was also an auto strike so i had to take the nearest transport and call a certain travels they took half an hour and then i reached by 11:30 what was our question what time you reached they should directly say 11:30 instead if they give a roundabout manner he will leave away in half the half when they are about to answer so hanuman was a person of great eloquence he knew when to talk and what to talk he said kandeen sita this beautiful scene as to how hanuman conveyed to ram the feelings whatever he had when he saw sita and how he saw sita and how he conveyed is beautifully conveyed in the composition of arunachala kavi he says kande 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 si andarum kanadalanka puriyil andarum kanadalanka puriyil andarum kanadalanka puriyil aravinda veda vetharavand maathavikkum kande ram i have seen sita don't worry ram i have seen sita but there is a beautiful interpretation in the words what hanuman gives to ram in the ramayana of kambana in tamil hanuman says to ram hey ram you remember i said i saw sita but now i am saying i didn't see sita more than how ram would have been confused we are confused 
Initially Hanuman said he saw Sita and now he is telling Ram I have not seen Sita. What is the implied meaning of it? Hanuman said Ram I didn't see Sita but I saw the personification of sincerity, love, affection, matritvam, love and regard for her husband, love and regard for her for the place where she was born, love and regard for the place where she was married to. I saw all of them put together in one beautiful form and that beautiful form was called she Sita. She is not a lady. She is the personification of all righteousness. She is the personification of Pathi Vratyam He Ram. Kandanan Karpinukku Aniye Kandgalal. I just saw the personification of Pathi Vratyam Ram. I'll tell you one more thing Ram. Unkulam Unnadakki Uyarpugalukku Uruttiyaya Tankulam Tannadakki Tannai Ittanimai Shairan Vankulam Uttukku Eind Vanavar Kulattai Valvittu Enkulam Enakku Tandaan Shaivadu Yemmoi Look Ram, by staying in one place itself your wife Sita is dominating the entire world. Ram was surprised. I am the person who is working so hard. Instead of putting my name, you are calling her the administrator. How is it possible, Hanuman? Unkulam unnadaki. Hey Ram. She has brought fame to your family. Ram asked how. Had Sita agreed to what Ravana had said, she would have brought down the fame and glory of your family. But she is so firm in her decision that she is the patni of Ram. She is the patni of Jagat Pita Ram. And she is so firm about it and in that firmness she has brought fame and glory to your family. Unkulam Unnadaki Likewise she has also brought fame and glory to the place where she was born, Janakakulam. By saying that she will always adhere to the path of righteousness. She will always adhere to the path that has been preached by her Purvacharyas. She has brought fame and glory to your Kulam. She has brought fame and uh, glory to her Kulam. Moreover, she has brought fame and glory to my Kulam, Vanavar Kulam, that is the Kulam, that is the family of monkeys. Ram asked how. Had she not been abducted by Ravana, you wouldn't have walked south from Nasik Panchavati. You would have stayed there for some more time and you would have gone top to Ayodhya. It is because Sita was abducted, you came in search of Sita, you came down to Kishkinda Rajam where you met Sugriva, heard about the worries of Sugriva, killed Vali and you restored righteousness in the family of monkeys. But it is in turn the effect of Sita's abduction which has caused, caused all these uh, byproducts. So it is Sita's grace which has brought the effect Ram. So by bringing fame and glory to your Kulam, that is Surya Vamsham, that is Ikshvaku Kulam of Dasharatha, by bringing fame and glory to Chandra Vamsham, that is that of Janaka, by bringing fame and glory to the Kulam of Sugriva, that is Vanavar Kulam, finally she brought the attitude and the characteristics of monkey back to me. This we cannot understand. Yen Kulam Yanakuttandal, that means what? Hanuman says she has brought back the characteristics of a monkey in me. What is the characteristic of a monkey? The most visible characteristic of a monkey is it will never be stable in one place. It won't sit for more than two seconds in one place. If you are seeing it in one place for two seconds, the next moment it will be in some other place. It will jump from this branch to that branch, that branch to the next branch. It will eat this fruit. Uh, after he ha having eaten half this fruit, it will go to the next fruit. So nothing is complete in a monkey. Its decisions are very unstable. It is not stable in its decisions. So was Hanuman. Hanuman was not stable in his decisions. He did not know how to take decisions until he met Ram. Once he met Ram and Lakshmana in Kishkinda Rajan, all his understanding changed and he also had human qualities by being stable. Then he thought, started thinking logically and he wanted to be stable in his life. But why did he do that? Because he came to know that the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Ram who is standing before him. So he became very stable. Now he lost the characteristic of a monkey. He acquired the characteristic of a devotee. But he lost the characteristic of a monkey. A monkey's decision is always unstable. But he became stable by knowing that Ram is the only Supreme Person. But when he saw Sita, he again became a monkey. He was not a monkey before he came to know that Ram is the Supreme Person. 
But once he saw Sita, his decision changed. Ram is not the only supreme person. Sita is the supreme person and Ram can be called the supreme person only when he is with Sita. So, his unstable attitude which was existent before and then changed later to stability was again brought back to unstability because of the darshan of Sita. So, in turn, the characteristic feature of the monkey to be re to remain unstable was brought back in him by Sita. So, she brought fame and glory to Janaka Kulam. She brought fame and glory to Dasharatha Kulam. She brought fame and glory to the monkey's Kulam, to the Vanara Kulam. And finally, she brought back the characteristic of Hanuman. This is conveyed here. Un Kulam Munnadaki Uyar Pugalku Vuruthi Ayatthan Kulam Thannadaki Thannay like how we have been discussing the importance of Sri Ramanujacharya's Visishtha Dvaita Sampradayam, that is Sri Vaishnavism. In Vaishnavism itself, like how Ramanujacharya's tradition is of prime importance, equal importance is also there for Madhvacharya's tradition. They basically exist around the headquarters of Udupi in Karnataka. Udupi is on the is in the west coast, uh, on the banks of, on the shores of Arabian Sea. In Udupi is Lord Krishna. With that as the headquarters, there are various mats by established by Madhvacharya, who was a Dvaiti. Shankaracharya was a Advaiti, Ramanujacharya was a Visishta Advaiti, and Madhvacharya was a Dvaiti. Though all these three belong to different classes of philosophy, one was a totally non-dualistic, that is Shankaracharya, Ramanujacharya was belonged to qualified non-dualism, Visishta Advaitam, whereas Madhvacharya belonged to dualism, one non-dualism, one dualism and one was qualified non-dualism. Though the names may be confusing and very high, they all had one thing in common, they were all Vaishnavites, they were all great devotees of Vishnu. Adi Shankara composed Bhajagovindam. Likewise, Madhvacharya composed various shlokas on Vishnu and so did Ramanujacharya. There is no question of Ramanujacharya at all. All his thoughts were only on Sriman Narayan. So, this particular shlokam which is recited by the Madhvas says how Vayu Bhagavan, who in his next incarnation as Hanuman, who in his next incarnation as Madhvacharya. Like how Ramanujacharya is believed to be an incarnation of Adi Sesha the great serpent of Sri Vaikuntam, so is Madhvacharya believed to be an incarnation of Vayu Bhagavan. Maya Vadi Gala Getti Tukusu Madhva Madhavan Uttari Tukusu Summane Vudu Pili Nimma Tukusu Purandara Vithalana Punya Tukusu Maya Vadi Gala Getti Tukusu Madhva Madhavan Madhva Madhavan The Sampradayam of Madhvacharya was established by Madhva who was an incarnation of Hanuman. Hanuman was the Putra of Vayu. So they all trace that particular Guru Parampara. Now, Hanuman, after having conveyed the news that he had seen Sita, now he had to give the information as to what all she said. He said, She has conveyed three important messages, Ram. The first one was, Chitra Kute Mahapragya Vaya Sampratti Raghava She said, in Chitra Kutam on the banks of Mandakini, Hey Hanuman, go tell Ram that there was one incident where even Lakshmana was absent and only Ram and myself were present. That was a Kaka Asura episode. Just go tell this, but Kaka Asura, he will remember. After he said this, Ram shed tears of joy. The next message was, Manashilayastilakam tad smarasveti chabravit. Hey Hanuman, go remind him of a particular episode where he just by mistake rubbed off the tilakam, the sindhuram which I was sporting on my forehead and because of which we had three days of pranaya kalaham and at the end of which how we both spoke. And as Hanuman said this, Ram shed the tears of joy again. And the third one was, Yesha Chudamani Shriman Maya. She has sent this particular ornament here Ram and showed Chudamani. Like how after having received the beautiful Anguliyakam, the beautiful Mudrika of Ram. Sita was happy. Bhartarami was Samprapta. On looking at the ring, she felt that she had acquired her husband her, uh, himself. Likewise, 
when ram received the chudamani he felt that he was touching sita in person now ram's reaction was great yathaiva dhenustravati sneha advastasya vatsala tatha mama api hridayam mani shreshthasya darshanat after having seen the chudamani and after having heard the private messages sent by sita to hanuman ram shed tears of joy and his joy has been compared to one beautiful incident it seems that a cow existed when she was taken to graze grass on the fields by the particular person who used to guard these cows all her calves were lo- lost and these calves started crying once they saw their their ma- ca- mother cow missing and after 8 or 9 days these calves which were totally tired came running to see a particular cow which looked like the mother and finally they came to know that the cow which was standing was their own mother like how a calf that is lost runs towards its mother so does ram's joy reach the chudamani because the chudamani that is sita the money the most precious ornament in ram's life was not the chudamani it was sita who owns the chudamani sita has been far off from ram for such a long time and once he received the chudamani he felt like a cow a calf that gets so much of pleasure when it sees its uh, mother who it assumes to be have been lost for such a long time यथैव धेनुः स्त्रवति स्नेहाद वत्सस्य वत्सला तथा ममापि हृदयं मणिश्रेष्ठस्य दर्शनात् मोरोवर देयर इज अनदर इंटरप्रिटेशन टू इट नाउ अ काऊ व्हिच हैज ऑलवेज बीन गिविंग मिल्क टू इट्स काल्फ्स वन डे फाइंड्स इट्स काल्फ्स मिसिंग एंड समबडी सेज ए माय डियर काऊ आई सॉ योर काल्फ समवेयर एंड दे आर रियली हंग्री दे आर थर्स्टी दे नीड योर मिल्क once having heard that their calves her calves exist and they are thirsty hearing the word calves itself the cow will start producing milk and the milk will start touching the ground so this is vatsalyam this is how a motherhood is this is how motherhood can be described a mother never forces herself to give milk on hearing about the welfare of her children and about being anxious about her children she starts producing milk so this is how ram's feelings gushed out when he heard that sita's chudamani is in his hands yathaiva denu stravati snehad vatsasya vatsala tatha mama api hridayam mani shreshthasya darshana now this chudamani's history is beautifully described mani ratnam idam dattam vaidehyaha shva shurena me madhu kale yata baddham adikam moodhini shobate this is one very important point you remember very well that after balakandam we came to ayodhya after ayodhya aranya after aranya kishkinda and after kishkinda we are now in sundarakandam in at the end of balakandam ram and sita got married they lived for 12 years and after that in ayodhya kandam when they were about to, when he was about to become a king kai kai asked them to go to the forest ram wore the dress of an ascetic he dropped all his ornaments so did sita she also wore the bags she also wore the deer skin and she left away all the ornaments and came and whatever little ornaments she acquired in the forest it was not what ram gave it was what anasuya gave anasuya was very happy and she told sita please don't deny my gifts i am giving because i like you and i like giving gifts you accept and these jewels whatever sita dropped in the forest when she was being abducted by ravana were the jewels that were presented to her by anasuya now she has had left all her jewels in ayodhya and all the jewels which she got in the forest were given to her by anasuya and all those jewels which were given to her by anasuya were dropped by her on the ground which sugriva received and showed it to ram where did this chudamani come from she must have left it at ayodhya had she left it at ayodhya she wouldn't have had in her hair and had she dropped it on the ground she wouldn't have had it in her hair neither did she leave in ayodhya nor did she drop it drop it in the ground then where did this chudamani come from was the doubt even which hanuman had though he did not put this question to ram ram himself clears and brings out the history of this chudamani he says hanuman you may be surprised as to why did sita not leave the chudamani in ayodhya or drop it on the ground you may be assuming that sita is materialistic and i am very partial no i did not tell her to keep the chudamani in ayodhya because she is a person a lady who is married to me 
and all the jewels that were gifted to her by my father who is her father in law dasharatha were kept back by her in ayodhya but this chuda mani is something that has been coming tradition after tradition generation after generation in janaka kulam this is the property which she has brought from her father's side and i have no rights to tell her that you have to give it in ayodhya it is the property what her father has given so she has carried it don't think that she is materialistic and she did not keep this in ayodhya this is what her father gave this is not what my father or what i gave to her what i gave to 